Today we're going to talk about how athletes can make money in sports. See, my mistake when I was an athlete was that I, I thought that my only value was my results. I didn't see the value in my looks, in my intelligence, in my communication, in knowing multiple languages and being able to communicate with journalists and give interviews internationally. None of that in my head was of value. Now, when I was competing, I was putting so much pressure on my result that that became the sole purpose of my whole existence. From a business perspective, that was wrong. First of all, I didn't understand my assets. I didn't understand the value of what I had besides the results. And as an athlete, you have to determine your foundation. To determine your foundation, you also need to know the market. You have to approach sports as a business. It's not only your physical performance, it's also your public performance. It's your presence. As an athlete, you usually look at yourself as a vehicle, as a part inside a big machine. But you also need to look at yourself as a singled out piece. What is your purpose? How you're able to distinguish yourself, identify yourself, and where that is necessary. To be able to do that, you need to do your market research. So for example, you're tall, slim, beautiful female. The first thought is probably modeling. And great, we have multiple female athletes who do very well with modeling. Now, acting could be another thing. However, if you're, for example, having hard times finding comfortable clothing for yourself because your measurements are not standardized, then you're looking at potentially giving feedback to some of the brands saying, you know, this area of, um, this area of apparel is neglected. If you were to take my measures and make it another model, then you would tap into a whole different market. You being different is actually something that's setting you apart and giving you a very specific place on the market that is usually not tapped into. So when you're looking at yourself as an athlete, results are great. But aside from the results, I'll tell you my story. My results, yes, I was, I built an entire sport from the ground up. I was performing everywhere first, you know, first World Cup, first um, uh, World Championships, first Olympics. Yes, that was great. However, when the sponsors came to me, it wasn't just that my results were great, but that wasn't the main thing. When you're representing a brand, for example, you have to be crystal clear on what that brand represents itself and what you stand for yourself. Draw yourself out and look at yourself from on the outside and see what are the strong traits that you possess that would benefit a certain product, a certain service. And then that's when you align. It's not that you have to approach the person or the brand. First, you have to distinguish and be very clear on what you represent, how people perceive you, what is the character you're portraying or being yourself. All of these things matter because as an archetype, for example, you're going to see that a lot of the brands are very far away from you. When you're looking at very specific you, you're also going to notice other specific brands, other specific businesses. It doesn't mean that you have to mold yourself to fit a certain brand just because the public says, oh, they're trendy or, uh, or wow, they're super luxurious or wow, they're the best on the market. That is an incorrect way of approaching yourself and when you're trying to align with, with a brand. You figure out the shape of yourself first, and then you're looking outward to see where you're actually contributing. If you're really good at technical stuff, but really don't like to be in public, being a media personality, that doesn't mean that you can't make a great living for yourself. Another question to ask is, is this the way I want to be living my life? Because a lot of the times people look at the dollar amount 
money amount, how much are they going to make when they're choosing a job or a profession? Few people ask themselves if this is the life they want to be living. I'll give you another example. I originally, after the Olympics, wanted to become a lawyer. And I already went through the LSAT, I already submitted documents and had invitation from a few schools. But my last step was to actually go into a law office and see if the lifestyle that they were leading was what I wanted to be doing, if not for the rest of my life, but for a big portion of my life. And so I scheduled meetings with lawyers and I showed up at their offices. And then I was honest with them and they said, hey, look, I'm not here to inquire about your services, but I'm considering becoming a lawyer. Could you please share your experience with me? So when they did, I realized that that wasn't the life I wanted. There were multiple hours sitting down. Uh, there, were, there were litigations that could last for years and have no conclusion. There were multiple things that didn't fit the way I wanted to live my life because the way I approach any profession, any business is that it's such a large portion of our life that if I am going to be miserable in that time, the rest of my life, even though if it's beautiful and maybe exciting, is not going to make sense. Because if I am hating the majority of my week, I don't think I will have the motivation to even enjoy the good parts of my life. So when you're choosing a profession, even if it's in sports, ask yourself if that's what you want to be doing. When I decided that sports will be my career, I wanted that not because I thought that I was super talented in sports, not because I had the means to start a whole sport, a sport in the country, not because I had support. I saw people who were driven, who had great aspiration, huge ambition, and who were very driven. Did I want to wake up at five in the morning to get up on the glacier and train for the next seven hours? Sometimes, sometimes not. But what I did want is to be around people who were driven, who were unbeatable, who were team players. All of those things mattered to me. When it stopped mattering to me, I exited the sports. And when it stopped mattering is when the pressure of the politics of the sports that I essentially got involved in involuntarily outweighed the pleasure and the excitement I was getting being part of this beautiful world of sports. Now, if you're very skilled in politics and you actually enjoy the intrigues and the inner workings of the sports industry, and every industry has that, it's just a matter of the scale. Which is more? Do you enjoy more or do you enjoy less? And whether the effort equals the enjoyment you're getting from it. So at some point for me in sports, the enjoyment I was getting from being an athlete wasn't outweighing the difficulties I was facing inside the sports politics. And that's when I decided that it wasn't worth it. I almost think that if they are neutralizing itself, that is not working either. The enjoyment of what you're doing and where you want to be has to definitely outweigh the difficulties you're facing. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth it. And I'm saying that not only from my experience, that is scientifically proven. The way our prefrontal cortex works is that it is able to quickly figure out whether the enjoyment is worth the effort. And if it's not worth the effort, it's not even going to give you the energy to go and do things. And that's when we say that we procrastinate or we get sick. That is our refusal to go and do something that is not going to pan out for us. When you're choosing a job, when you're choosing your next direction, whether you're still in sports or out of sight of sports, determine what is the life you want to be living. Because I knew exactly how I function, I was able to determine certain things and brush off things that didn't work for me without contemplation, whether it's right or wrong. Something just feels right when it is right. Often, 
if you're an athlete, you are a marathon runner, your mind calculates things differently. Not to say that you're poorly suited for a for fast paced job, but I would say that it's not ideal for you. However, if you're a sprinter and you're going into a company that takes its time, it's very diligent. For example, the sales cycle can last a year, two, even three, and you're not getting results quick, quick, quick. You're doing yourself a disfavor because you are who you are. You have been in sports for so long. Some of you have been in sports for 20 years now. It is unreasonable to start changing yourself to fit a certain structure now. After 20 years of training, can you imagine how much time you will have to spend to retrain a neural path that has been used there for 20 years? Things like that are going to shape you in, in a very clear way where choices become easy for you because you're not compromising who you are. So at least 50% of the choices are brushed off right away. And you don't have to waste your energy on contemplating right, wrong. And then the more you narrow down, the better fit you're already able to find. And what happens when you're perfectly aligned with the business, with the brand, with the workplace, with partners, with clients, things become easy because it is your way of living. What a lot of people don't understand that athletes, they live the sport. They don't exit the sport the minute they walked out of the gym or the training place. They stay athletes in the sport and in life, and that's who they are. And if they try to reinvent themselves outside of sports and try to fit a narrative that is there for people who have never been in sports, they're going to break themselves physically, mentally, spiritually. We're going to talk about spirit and that's a whole big other conversation. But j just to mention a few things that spirit comes from alignment. Because when you're aligned, even when difficulties come, it's not, an, uh, it's not a dead end. You always know that, yes, it is a challenge, but I'm able to handle it. And that's where the strength of the spirit comes in. When you're misaligned, your whole existence starts crumbling because everything screams, why are we doing it? That is not ours. It's not helping us. It's not elevating us. Why would I need to do it? So when the body starts to resist, it's your first red flashing light that something is wrong. If you're resisting, there's a good chance that something is not clicking right. And once you find that out, you're able to move forward without having to overcome things. When the challenge comes and you're aligned, you're working through it, it expands you. You become bigger, you become stronger, more confident. When you have to overcome things, that's when the block is here saying, don't go there. Go different direction. But a lot of people try to get through the wall or they try to get over themselves. You know, they'll go and do the psilocybin, ayahuasca, uh, you know, all sorts of meditations. Well, what is there? The uh, frog, the frog poison, I forget what it's called. Don't get over it. Pivot and, and find the way where it's so you that even when it's hard, it still feels right early in your career, early in your retirement after sports is going to serve you for the rest of your life. Because when you overcome things, then at some point in life, you have to get back and finally take the right turn. When you have seen the blog and you're not trying to overcome it, you're working with where it's flowing, then that's the skill that you will always have to guide you in any difficult situation with the confidence that you've got it. Let me know in comments if that made sense, how it resonated or didn't with you. And I'll try to address through your comments a deeper 
understanding of where you're struggling to either agree with who you are and how you're functioning or how to navigate the confusion because a lot of the times we get confused by society, by social media, by something we've been told as we were growing up and even cultural differences. So I want to address those, but I won't know about them if you don't let me know. So please do and we'll talk next time.